In this video, I want to teach you guys how to actually integrate a VTO pass. And I've been getting quite a, a lot of requests to actually teach how to do this. And I'm, I'm actually responding to that in this video. And if you don't know what VT pass is, it's just a RESTful API that you can actually uh, do your VTU businesses with. You can buy something like your VTU, that means your MTN, Glow, uh, ATL, Nine Mobile, just right about any network in Nigeria. Uh, and not just only that, they also do sell other international operators uh, network okay that means that you can be a nigerian register with them and be able to sell a time to people who are living in america people who are living in ghana just right about most of the countries that they actually support okay so they have the api right now and people want me to actually teach how to integrate the system okay even though we're not going to be diving into the international part of it because i've not actually looked at looked at the end point but i can teach you how to actually integrate the system we should be able to know how to sell something like the mtn the atl the nine mobile just for about any network in nigeria and it does not actually stop there they also sell cable subscriptions and also that of the power that's electricity okay so i'm going to show you how to basically integrate the vtu the vtu part of it in this video okay maybe in the future we can take a look at some other part of it okay like the electricity bills and that of the uh, cable subscriptions okay so without wasting much time let's dive right in and i will show you how to actually do that just in a few simple lines and we're going to just like cover things like being able to generate something like a request ID, which is one of the things that people have been finding difficult to actually do. Okay, I've actually got a request to teach how to even generate that simple request ID. So I'm going to teach you how to do that in this video. And after that, we'll see how is it that we can actually uh, go straight into integrating the VTU pass, the VTU part of it, the buying a time from their system. Okay, and just things of that nature. And after that, we're going to also take it to a level where we, I should also show you how to actually make use of their system to be able to to be able to integrate and then test their system without having to use real money because they have something like a sandbox environment so i'm going to show you how to actually sign up with a sandbox environment so that all the testing that you are going to be doing will be using like free money you don't have to have real money in the system before you can actually test their uh, system out okay and you are going to they offer like something over two million naira or just right about two million naira in your balance for you to be able to test out the application which is a lot of money that you can actually use when you are just testing the application out and this is not actually real money so you cannot withdraw that you can just only use that they're mocking their success and failure uh part of their uh, api in that part with with that money okay so that's just what that is so we always do much let's dive right in and see how to actually do this and it's going to be very simple all right, so this is basically what the application looks like. So we just basically need to select a network or an operator right here. So we have MTN, ATL, Glow, my nine mobile, and once to get that selected, we need to go ahead and then kind of enter the amount that we actually want to recharge from our, our account from a VTA pass. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to just do something like 15 error right there, and we can go down here and then enter the phone number that would actually recharge uh, that particular amount to. And, in, and one beautiful thing about uh, VT Pass is that we even have uh, like a test environment. So whatever that I'm actually doing right here now, I'm not going to be using real money to do that. Okay, so they have uh, like a, a test environment and we're going to actually hook up with that as we move along. Okay, so that is a phone number that you can use to actually test to mock a successful um, ATAM purchase or data purchase, which is right here, 080-11111 right there. Okay, so that's the phone number that you can actually use to do the testing. So you can go ahead and hit on top of and that's actually going to go through and then it's going to redirect you to this particular success page telling you that that uh, top up has actually gone through okay and uh, that is just that so it's actually very simple so i made it in such a way that we don't have to like take so much time to figure out what to actually do okay and this is actually not a production application anyways but it's going to give you all the tools that you need to actually go ahead and then create your own production application from it so i'm going to basically make sure that i, I expose everything that you actually need to know okay so before we go ahead and then begin to do whatever that we want to do right now i want to first of all take you to um the page this particular page we are able to use uh, a vt pass uh, test credentials to actually go through that is and if it actually works if everything works fine you can actually request to switch to life mode okay so the the of uh, the api is actually very nice for at least providing this environment for us to be able to test out without using way money to actually go through the testing okay so the environment for you to have a free uh testing credentials is actually sandbox.vtpass.com okay so you can actually go to this particular url to sign up and if you want to actually switch to life mode 
here is the live mode url it's actually called www.vtpass.com okay so i'm actually logged on to my own um, account right now and before we actually proceed i like to tell you guys that i have an affiliate link with them and i'm going to actually put this particular affiliate link in the, in the description box in case you want to actually use my referral link to actually uh, register with them okay so it's not actually going to change your shopping experience with them or whatever transaction experience that you're going to have with them but it's a, they are actually going to reward me for referring you to them and that's actually going to help me to keep on doing free videos like this okay so that's just that's so why i would really appreciate if you can actually use my affiliate code you can use 2962942 right there or you can actually check the description box to click on this particular link that i'm going to put on the description box so that you can go ahead and uh, register okay so that they can actually give me some sort of a commission if you ever make any transactions with them so that's just that right now so i want to log on to because i don't want to reconcile myself with the live environment right now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just close this out okay and then try to log into my test environment which i'm going to just go ahead and click on right here because i've actually registered with the test environment and that's actually what i used in the testing just now so i'm going to log in right now and that's basically going to kind of log me in okay and the test that i just did right now all right so if you want to actually see a, a complete uh, transaction that i've actually done you can scroll down it and go to the section where they say view previous transaction and if you click on it it's going to load up this page where you see um, the details of the transaction you see that the one that we just did right now says completed that means that that's a transaction actually completed and if it was actually on a live mode it, it was also right completed in, as long as you put the away credential and if it is not it's actually going to tell you that it's actually failed so for instance this particular one down here failed at a certain time okay so that's just how that basically works you know that's that this is the status and if you check the time you should be able to agree with me that um, the, this morning this is if you check the time right here you see that that this is 10th and that's actually uh 10th uh, october i mean i mean this is actually fit october 2023 and if you take a look at the time right there you see that it almost corresponds with the time that we have right here okay so if you take a look at that so that's just what we just worked on just now okay the testing that we just did so all right so we are wasting more time what we need to do right now is that let's just start creating this application by going back to let's go to um the folder where we'll have to create let's create a folder for the application i want to work on right now so i'm going to create a new folder within my hd docs so if you are using windows go to your hd docs and create a new folder for this i'm going to just call this btu uh vt pass something like that btu vt pass okay so and i'm going to basically open this up with our visual studio code and to do that is very simple i'm going to just go to the file menu and then go to open folder and we can actually navigate to our hd doc and then we'll go to vt vtu pass right there and we can go ahead and open this up and if you take a look at that i do not actually have anything in that folder right now so i'm going to create my first few folders and the first one is going to be index.php get that opened up and i want to create the second one which is basically going to be that of the success page.php all right so that is just that so if i open up my let me close this out the index i want to generate the html boilerplate which i'm going to just basically put something like an exclamation and a hit tab and it's going to generate this for me which we can just basically add our title right here and i'm going to just say vt pass a time and data okay we can just say and data because if we actually want to switch to data we can actually do that but what i'm going to basically do this is just focus on the a time part of it and if i do the a time you should be able to replicate that and then do that of the data okay so that's just basically what that is so the next thing i want to do is just um put a couple of things like the form into this particular body okay and then to do that is actually very simple what i'm going to do is to first create h1 so i'm going to just say h1 right here and uh, sorry about that i'm actually putting that in the wrong place uh, so let's just get into this place and just say h1 and let's close out the h1 right there and then what the title that i want to put right there is basically going to be the same thing so i'm going to just copy this and just copy this right here and then put it within the h1 body and i think we should actually introduce a false slash here to properly close that h1 right there all right so if we have that right there the next thing i want to generate is the form so i'm going to use the form i'm going to just say action then let's go ahead and set that to empty strings meaning that it's going to use this page to actually process whatever that we are actually doing so then let's set the method and the method is actually going to be that of the post so this is post and we can actually go ahead and then close that out right there and after that i want to create that um, 
this particular select uh, button right here i want to go back so i want to select i want to create this particular select button right here so to do that or select menu so to do that is very simple i'm going to just create Okay, the select tag and we're going to just give that a name and let's say that a name is going to be something like operator so you can call that network if you want but i think the most general name is actually operator so i'm just say operator and that's just that so let's go ahead and close out we're going to add the required attributes right here because we're not going to be doing too much with the php based on the validation anyway so we can close the select tag right here and then within this select tag we can bring in our options okay so the first one i want to create right now let's just say option first and we can actually say something like oh if we say option we can go ahead and then bring in let's just say something like select a network or an operator you can call it in anything between the two so let's go ahead and then close that out so this is going to be option and after that we're going to create another option and let's say we're going to give this a value and let the value be equal to something like mtn so we're going to just say mtn and we can go ahead and then just do something like mtn a time right here or just simply say something like mtn so if we say something like a time that's that's still actually okay but i just say um mtn a time right there and i'm going to go ahead and then close out the option right here so this is going to be option and i want to copy this to make this a little bit faster so let's paste this maybe three more times and what i'm going to do the, the second one is actually going to be that of the atl so i'm going to just change this to atl so this is going to be atl and let's change this to atl and after that um the next one is actually going to be that of the let's say glow so this is going to be glow and let's change this to glow a time and for this which is the last one right here let's say something like nine mobile so this is going to be nine mobile and you can actually say nine mobile right there and that should be it on that angle so the next thing i want to do right now is to go ahead and then do something like let's say we are going to create a field of the amount that the person actually want to buy okay so for that reason i'm going to just say input so this is going to be input and i'm going to just say type and we set the type i'm going to set that number basically so this is going to be a number and uh, we need a name that we can actually grab onto through the php and that's going to be something like let's say amount like that just amount and we can go ahead and then create something like let's make this let's mark this required we want to mark this particular field required right now so that to force people to actually enter something right there using the html5 required attribute and we can create place something like a placeholder right here so we're going to just say placeholder and we can go ahead and then uh, say something like how much a time um do you do you want something of that nature so it's going to be just sort of like we're asking them a question of how much credits do they actually want to buy so that is that i want to copy this right now i want to let me collapse this part so that this can be on a separate on a single line i'm going to paste that right there and the this particular one is just the field that i'm actually going to use for the phone number okay so i'm going to basically leave this as or uh, let's say it's still going to be number and but i want to change the name to phone so this is going to be phone and it's going to be required and then the place for that is going to be enter your phone number here so let's say something like um enter the phone number um the phone number that we receive this a time okay the phone number that is actually going to receive that a time that's what you're going to actually put in here and um, so that's just that okay so we have that right now and i think that the last thing that we we'll basically want to do right now is going to be to create something like um, a submit button so i'm going to change the tab right here to submit and we can basically change the name to let's go ahead and call our top up so that becomes top up and we're not, we're not going to need this okay so we're not going to need this i'm going to take that away and we're going to need a value which is the word that people are going to see in their html page to actually click on so let's just say something like top up something of this nature okay so and then if we go to our browser right now and let's say we're going to actually access let me close this out or let's change that this is going to be changed to we call that vtu uh vt pass so let's open that up and here is it guys so basically let's change this instead of a quality sound right there we need to change this to something of this nature okay so if we refresh right now you see that this is what we got right here so we have the field for network and we got the field for amount and then we'll go to the field for a phone number, then we'll have a submit button. 
okay so let's add a style to this which i'm not going to actually basically type them out i'm going to just basically copy the style and then paste within this page and i'm going to show you when i do that okay, so i basically have the uh, the css copied to my clipboard and i want to add it within the head region okay the head tag right here so we can basically add it anywhere on this place but i'm going to just add it just immediately after the title right here so i'm going to paste what i just copied and i'm going to show you that right now so if i scroll to the very top and what i just pasted now started from here okay remember i just said that just after the title so i'm basically starting the body right here so right here i'm setting the front family setting the background setting the margin the um the padding then the text alignment to the center of the web page and the style that we see right here um right here is just for that of the h1 and after that we start styling the form from here setting the background of the form to white padding to 20 pixels uh border radius to five pixels and then we're setting a, a box shadow right here so the margin is set right there and then we will have a max width of 400 pixels and after that we began to select or uh, working on the impulse okay the first one we worked on right there is the select and after that we worked on the input that is actually based on the type text and after that we worked on the one that is actually based on the type number which is for the phone number and the amount and after that we did give uh, the select a height of uh, 40 pixels and then um, we continued by uh, like uh, styling that of the submit button to make it look beautiful okay so we set the background to this the color of the text border to none padding to 20 pixels by uh, 10 pixels by 20 pixels and then the border radius to 3 pixels that will set the, uh, the pointer the cursor to actually pointer so that the mouse button will actually look like every human hand when you try to hover on it and after that we selected the hover effect for it so we just basically change the background if you hover on it and if i have this saved right now so i'm going to just click save as right there and then go back to the browser and i refresh and you see that it looks just like the former okay so if you hover on this you see what that everything that we actually um instructed it to do in the css is actually happening right here okay so that's just basically how to get the front page up and running and we are done with the front page okay so that's the code right there okay i hope you grab that from here to this point all right so the next thing i want to do is to start working on the uh, php part of it and to do that i'm going to do it at the top of this place so i'm going to throw in my php tag right here and then let's close that now within this play the first thing i want to do is just check for a submit click right there so i'm going to say if it's set right there and what i'm going to do let's take away one s right there so if it's set um dollar underscore post and remember that the name of the form is actually called a top up so i'm going to say top up and if someone actually clicks on that we're going to just echo out something right now to check if we're actually getting a click or well, being able to listen to the right click right there so i'm going to say um something like a top top something like that and let's save this right now and if we go back to our browser let's refresh this page and if we go ahead and hit on top pop we should be okay the form is actually required so i'm going to enter something like 20 naira right here then the phone number right there i'm going to just enter any phone number and then hit on top up and if you take a look at the top of this place you see that we have top top so that means that we're actually basically listening to the right button all right so i'm going to take this away right now and the first thing i want to do is to actually capture the things that are actually on that particular form all right so let's first of all capture the operator okay which is the first thing on that place i know you don't have to do the first one that is on that place you can do it in any order but let me just create a variable i'm going to just call operator just for the first thing that we have on that form okay so we're going to go ahead and i said that to uh what we're going to say dollar underscore post which is a super global array and we can actually go ahead the name that we give to that i think we'll call that operator so let's say operator right there and we can we're going to basically wrap some security functions around this and the first one i want to use right now is going to be html special charles and we can wrap that around this and there's one more thing i want to do in case there are spaces i want to be able to trim out white spaces so for that reason i'm going to just say trim close that out with that right here and that's just basically that okay so i'm going to copy this line um only this line and then paste it maybe two more times one two right there and the second thing we need to actually capture is going to be that of the customer i don't know if we um i don't know i think we call that a phone but okay let me just create a, something like a 
let's call this customer as a variable name but i think we'll call that a phone within the form and we'll just call that and the reason that i'm just saying this has customized that so i'm going to actually find that as we move along the um, the endpoint i mean the vt pass actually recognize this thing as uh, something like a customer okay so that particular phone number is what they're using to bear that uh, particular person as a customer so after that particular line the next thing we did was to actually grab up to the amount so i'm going to say amount and you can change what we we'll have here to amount and that's just basically the two line that we actually need okay um the three lines okay so we have the phone number field we have uh the network field which is the operator and we need the we have gotten the amounts okay so the basically the first things that we need all right so so i think that this is basically the right time for us to take a look at the documentation to begin to see how easy that we can actually integrate this particular gateway okay and you can actually take your time to do validation you want to validate this by yourself i've actually done validation uh, quite a lot of times on my channel and using uh, php you can actually do that so the only thing that i did right now was to add a required attribute to the html five tags so go ahead and then do the validation right here make sure that we're actually collecting the right inputs okay so what i'm going to do right now remember i said that this is actually going to be a quick video so i'm going to just integrate uh, vt pass right here so i'm going to just say vt pass okay so and to do that what i want to do i want to take you to the documentation page right now which is within this particular page and um uh, what I'm going to do, let me just open up a new tab and then go to VT Pass, the main website. And if that opens up, what I want to do is to find a link that leads to the documentation. So which is right here. So you can actually click to the API documentation right here. And it's going to open up. And if it opens up, they have pretty nice uh, documentation. And you can go to, let's say, uh, this, this place where they wrote something I like learned how to use. So what I want to do is to just basically go to the A time VTU API. That's what I want to do on this video. So if you want to work on the data, you can go to this one, which says data subscription API. If you want to go for the cables, okay, you can go for TV subscription API. If you want to go for power, okay, that is electricity, you can go for electricity power API and the likes of the things that they have in here. But we are interested in A time VTU API today. So I'm going to click on that and we'll have MTN right here. As the first thing so i'm going to basically use that of the mtn a time vtu api which we in turn once we do this we're going to use that opportunity to cover the rest that we have here like glow a time nine mobile and whatever that is actually there okay except the international a time which i have never actually looked at at for the first time i've been using them so i've not actually looked at international a time api but then let's go ahead and take a look at the, this particular one that says m10 a and it's going to open up this particular page for us and if you take a look at this and read it very well we're going to see that we're going to need an authentication we need to authenticate to the system and to actually authenticate is actually going to be very simple say they say that you if you want to learn about authentication and then actually click here but before i actually click there right now i want to move a little bit down so available endpoints so to integrate vtu m10 vtu let's play p at the endpoint below applies to purchase a product and also query the transaction status okay so the one that we're actually majorly concerned right here is actually to purchase the product and these are the endpoints i mean they're the purchase product endpoints so we're going to use something like a post method to actually do this and we are on a um, what is it called on the sandbox environment so that means we're going to actually make use of this particular sandbox environment okay so if we do that and then the phone that we can actually use for the testing the phone number is actually here so they have that printed right here if you're on a live mode you can actually make use of this one so but we're not live right now we're on sandbox so we're going to make use of this and then the service id is right here which says mtn okay and that was the reason why in our html i kept adding those things right there that was the time i was adding those things I added um, MTN, I added ATEL, and I added the uh, Glow, and even my mobile right there. So that's basically where that part is actually coming from. So if we go back to the browser right now, and I want to take a look at this table. So this table actually, it's actually um, a table that tells us all the things that we need to actually put in place to be able to um, a kind of integrate their system, okay? So we're gonna need a request ID, okay? And it's actually mandatory. If you take a look at here, it's mandatory. M stands for mandatory. 
oh, it's going to stand for optional. Okay, and then the type, the data type is going to be string. Okay, so, and they say, this is a unique reference with which you can use to identify and query the status of a given transaction after the transaction has been executed. And you can actually click right here to learn how to generate a valid uh, request ID, which I'm going to do that. I'm going to open that up on a new tab. And this is basically where most people are actually having issues. So uh, someone have actually requested that I should help out on how to actually generate um, a valid request ID from them, which is actually simple, but I don't know why the person had an issue, but we're gonna just answer that in this particular video. So if you take a look at it, they say that the request ID format. So the request ID over should be a string in the units form, I mean in the, in the units format. And this, that means that we're gonna have to have a year and we'll grab onto the month and then day, this one is for hour, and after that, we're gonna have minutes right there, okay? So that's just how it is. It's gonna be consistent up to this date, plus current time, hour, and minutes, just like this form. It's gonna be in this particular format, all right? So, and then, we can actually go ahead and concatenate with uh, any other alphanumeric uh, string as desired. So it's gonna look somewhat like this. So from here to maybe right here, is basically something like um, the timestamp or anything that actually follows from here down to this particular place can be any character that i want to generate okay so this you know i want you want to pay attention to this note right here they say it must be 12 character or more so it will not be less than 12 characters and the first 12 characters must be numeric it must be number so that's talking about this this place right here okay so let's see from here to this particular if you can't very well see that it's actually 12 then anything can actually come after that sorry about that all right so the next thing says that the um, first 12 character must uh, comprise of today's date so it must comprise of today's date and next time next thing right there it says that the date and time should be in african uh, lagos time zone okay so if you're in nigeria it has to actually be that okay so, so that's just what that is. Uh, it must be that of the African Lagos time zone. That's GMT plus one. So cool. All right, so I think that that's just basically what we need right now. We need to go ahead and see how is it that we can actually generate this one. So that, that's basically the first thing we need, the request ID. So if we go back to our development environment, I want to go ahead and do that right here. And to do it is actually very simple. I'm going to just, first of all, I want to grab onto that uh, time zone, first of all. So I'm going to just say something like a date, underscore it's going to be underscore default time zone okay so this is going to be dates underscore default time zone underscore so we're going to use set right here instead of dates so i'm going to change this to set i'm going to change this to set and i'm going to just go ahead and throw in my parentheses then in quotations can be single or double quotation we'll just say africa since they say that it must be africa force like lego so i'm going to just do it this way lagos so with that line alone i've actually grabbed onto the, the time zone so i'm going to terminate that line and if we have that in place the next thing i want to do right now is to create the current time stamp so let's do that right here and let's say just get the current time stamp okay so to get the current time stamp i want to put that in a variable right now so let's create a variable and call that current underscore time underscore stamp okay or well, basically let's just call that current time so that to make the things short for us and to get the current time stamp we're going to use the method from a php called a new date so i'm going to just say new space and i'm going to just say date time i'm going to go ahead and pass in a parenthesis right there so we're going to use this method to actually generate the current time stamp so for instance if you actually if you echo this out right now um let's just echo that out Let's save this and then if we go to the let me just I want to basically take that out of this place. If I take that out here, put that outside of this place, I want to be able to see that immediately the page kind of refreshes. Um I just refresh the page. Um that could not actually be converted. So um all right, so I think if you want to actually convert that, let me take away this echo right here. We can actually do the converting down here and let that be something i'm going to create a new variable right here i'm just basically i'm going to copy these things and take them away from here so i'm going to go say something like formatted let's call that formatted time so to format the time right here what i'm going to do right now is to just put it in the in the way that they actually want it to be okay so 
to do that we're going to just make use of this this same variable that is up here which is current time okay we're going to just use our arrow right here and then go ahead and then set that pass that through the format or uh, method and what we're going to do in the format method right now is to make sure that we are able to use uh, if you go to the documentation right here we should be able to make sure that we get this thing right here so we should be able to use this particular thing that they told us right here and the way that i'm actually going to put my own is going to be very simple so first of all i'm going to specify that of the year which i'm going to put a capital letter y right there and let's put this in code guys so this is going to be capital letter y for the year and once i get the letter i want to get the month which i'm going to just do m and after that i want to get the day which is d right there and after the D, I'm going to basically go ahead and then get that of the hour. This is going to be capital letter H. And after that, we can go ahead and get the minute, okay? Um, it's actually the minute, yeah. So we can go ahead and get the minute right here by making use of that I like this, okay? And we can actually terminate this particular line. And if we echo this out right now, I'm going to put echo right here and then go back to our browser. And I want to refresh this page. Um... And if we refresh that, you see that we get something that looks like what they're actually demanding for. Okay, so this is the year, and the time right there is 10. Okay, and then we have 05 right there. And um, because basically, this is just how it's actually going to look. This is the timestamp. I may not correctly explain everything right now to you, but this is just basically how that is going to look. Okay, so we basically have gotten that time right there. I'm going to cut this. And I use it to replace what I had here earlier. So I'm going to take this away. And then there's no need for this echo right here. Okay, so we have that right here. And the next thing we want to do right now is that we want to look for a way to actually generate an additional alphanumeric characters, okay, to add onto this, just like this, they told us that we need to add something like an alphanumeric number so just so that it will be up to that of the 12 character or more. So to do that, it's going to be very simple. I'm going to do it down here. And I'm gonna just let's just say let me put a comment and just say something like generate and this be generate more alpha alpha numeric character and to actually do that we we're gonna just do that down here so it's gonna be we can basically use something like a unique ID to actually generate that but I'm gonna just put a static uh, alpha numeric values in there okay so I'm just gonna basically say something like additional so this is gonna be additional underscore Charles which means additional characters. And you can actually go ahead and set that to just like I said, I'm gonna put static right there. I'm gonna do, do something like eight nine H T Y, just something of that nature. Okay, so I hope this if we add this to that is gonna let's, let's just make sure we add more, maybe Y zero or Y or like right there. Okay, so just make sure that it's alpha numeric alphabet and then that of the number. Okay, so don't put special characters in there. All right, so I'm gonna just go ahead and then terminate this line right now. And if we join these to whatever that we have gotten, it must be it will be up to that of the 12 characters or even more. And if it is not, you can actually add whatever I want to add right there. All right, so we have that in place right now. And after that, we'll, the next thing that we want to do right now is to make sure that we are able to concatenate. I mean, we want to join this particular thing right now to the script we have it here so that they will be in the same line. Okay, so to do that is actually very simple. It's just a basic use of a concatenation knowledge that we're going to use to do that. And let's just put a comment here and just say concatenate the two variables for the request ID. ID is above. Okay, you can just put in brackets. We're going to just say current, current time, and that of the formatted time, right? That's, I think, uh, no, additional character. So I was going to say additional, additional character. Okay, like that. So to do it, I'm going to just put that down here. And let's let's call that uh, something like a request. This is going to be request underscore ID, and we're going to go ahead and then we're going to first of all I'm going to bring in the formatted uh, time, and um, I think uh, this comment that I have in here right now I should have used something like formatted. I should put that right here. So this should have been formatted uh, time instead of a uh, current time because we do we have actually converted the current time to that of the formatted time right here so that's what we're doing here all right so we have that right now and what we're going to do is this so we have created a new variable and i'm going to just set that to formatted time so this is going to be formatted formatted time and we're going to just basically add a dot right here space that again and then say something like additional this is going to be additional charts okay characters so let's terminate that line and with that line alone it means that we've actually generated 
the request ID that we're gonna know we need in the integration, okay? And we can actually use something like a while loop to actually loop through whatever that we're gonna actually get right there. And if we wanna add something like our our initial, we can actually do that. In fact, let me basically even add that, okay? So I think what will actually spoil if we do that. So to do that, I'm gonna use while loop. And within this particular while loop right now, what I'm gonna do is gonna be very simple. So I'm gonna just say um, why the ST the, the length, so I'm talking about the length right now. So let's put it right here. Why the str len, which is the length of the character that we are basically generating, is okay. So let's say that of the, the variable we just created, which is actually called a request ID. Someone just say request ID. Why it's actually less than that of the 12 characters. Okay, I want to be sure that we we'll check that right there. All right, so why this, why this particular request id is actually less than 12 we can basically do something in here maybe add more um, more characters to it okay so what i'm going to basically do right now is just add something like an initial or whatever that i actually want to do so this is going to be just request id and we're going to just do what we're going to do is just just add up to whatever that has been generated for us and for that reason we're going to just say dot and then say equal to and we can go ahead and then add the characters that we actually want to add so in my own case, I would just maybe basically add something like X right here, okay? So, but I know that the, the whatever that is being generated must be more than that of the 12 characters. So this line may not run anytime sooner. It may not run many times now, but I think it's necessary to just, I should just put that right there, okay? So else, we have else part right here. So if the condition is actually met, so we can go ahead and then do whatever that we want to do, which is going to basically be the API integration proper right here so i'm going to just do api um integration proper okay so let's do that right here so let's forget about what we have just done up here so this basically may never run. all right so that's just that so down here what i want to do the first thing i want to do right now is to grab onto the url or the endpoint so i'm just create um that right here so i'm going to just say api url so let's just do that api url and we're going to go ahead and then copy that i think we were seen that before now so if we go to the documentation page and we scroll to this particular place i want to grab onto this so we're on the test environment so we should make use of that uh, testing url so i'm going to just put that in quote right here is that and we can go ahead and then terminate this line and make sure we terminate that right all right so let's bridge this space guys okay so we have that right now and after that, we are going to just basically try to look for a way to grab onto all of this data that we have in here, okay, and then pass that through the, um, what is it called, through the request, um, through the body data. So the data that the website is going to need, that's just what we are talking about. So it's basically going to need a request ID, it's going to need a service ID, it's going to need an amount, and also need something like a phone number. So let's look for a way to actually uh prepare our data for that and to do that i'm going to put that in a variable that i'm going to just call data and let's go ahead it's going to be an array so let's say array now let's just make sure that that's actually bracket pure brackets and i'm going to terminate this line and i'm within this place right now i'm going to begin to specify or begin to like create uh, places for these things to actually come in okay so the first one that i want to actually bring in right now is going to be that of the request id so to bring in the request id if you check um, the documentation very well i'm going to see that uh, uh just try okay so the fuse is actually here right so i'm going to copy this and if i go to my development environment I want to first of all bring that of the request ID. I'm going to put that in quote, paste that, and I'm going to use arrow this way. And I'm going to bring in the variable that we just worked mm -hmm. on right now, which is the request ID. So I'm going to go ahead and put that right here. Okay. And remember that uh, this is just, let me make sure that the variable is actually correct. So this is on our way. So I'm going to be separating them with a comma. So we we'll have that right now. The first one is in, and the next one is actually going to be the service ID, which is right here. So I'm going to copy this. And then if we go back, and I'm going to paste that right here. I'm gonna put that in quotes and that's gonna be I'm gonna use arrow and then the service ID is actually uh, the operator okay the operator so if you check that documentation very well it says that the service ID ID as specified by the VT pass in this case is actually MTN okay so we're not gonna just put MTN right here and the reason for that is because we made it to be dynamic so that we can use that uh, this one page to actually serve both mtn a tile glow and that of the uh nine mobile so that's why we created this right here okay remember that the that particular field if you check our browser right here see that it's actually dynamic if you open this if you select a time whatever that is in that place becomes a uh, a tail a tail a time rather all right so we're gonna for that reason we're gonna use this operator 
uh, variable right there. So I'm going to paste this over this. So this is going to be operator variable. And um, the next one, let's let's introduce a comma in here. I think that the next one is going to be the amount. So let's put that right here. This is going to be amount. And let's bring in the variable called amount right there. Introduce a comma. And then the last one is actually going to be that of the phone. So I'm going to just say phone. And we'll go ahead and then bring... Uh, the variable that we actually use as phone right here which we actually call the customer okay so if you don't actually understand that you can go ahead and change that to phone okay but that's just what i want to use as the the customer not that says something about it okay but that's that actually contains the phone and what i'm going to need there uh, something like um a comma because this is actually the last item in the id in the uh, what is it called the last item that we have in the in the array so after that the next thing that we need to do is to set up some configurations okay so to do that it's going to be actually done down here so set up some curl so it's going to be curl config okay so this curl configuration i'm going to just copy and paste them right here and then we're going to go over it okay so I've, I've been typing that quite a lot of time on this channel so there's no need wasting too much time trying to type them out one after the other all right all right so i have that copied to the clipboard and i want to i want to paste that right here so i'm going to just do control v to paste and this is just basically what we'll be doing on this channel so this is we're basically initializing the the url right here so once we have that initialized we want to go ahead and begin to, to do some configuration okay so which we are basically setting uh, this to a post request that we're actually trying to make use of a, a method called a post in this particular integration or uh, call it configuration and after that we're just making sure that uh, we encode all the data which is from the variable up there where we have our payload okay and after that we are uh, trying to actually return the transfer setting that to true right here so that we can actually get something back from um vt plus and after that we we'll have a header right here okay we're setting our header in here and our header is basically going to need two things or three things right here we're going to need our api key then most of the time it's going to be the public api key right here and after that we're going to need the secret uh, key right here which we're going to get from the uh, vt pass okay and that's actually what actually proved that this is an api so if we cannot put these apis in here that means we'll have no business with uh, working with an api so i'm going to take away the api key right here and if we go back to our uh, browser right here i want to look for that within our okay so i want to go to this environment okay so once we're on this environment we need to make sure that let's let's go to the home page of this page and we need to basically generate an api key for ourselves i have my own already generated and i want you to go ahead and then generate your own right now and i'm going to show you how to do that right now so you don't need to bother okay, because it can actually be confusing on how to actually generate your api when you get to this particular page all right so if you're on this page right now the next thing that you need to do and you are logged in the next thing that you need to do is to go ahead and then you kind of generate an api key and by the way i did not actually explain this wallet balance that we have in here you see i have over a million naira that i'm actually using to actually test this is not actually a real money okay so bt pass actually offers you this so that you can use it to do whatever type of testing that you normally um would like to actually test during your development uh, period okay and this is this is like one million when i started okay so your own, i mean a two million when i started if you check your own right now if you have not actually done any testing before yours should be two million right here okay so but well, that's not actually something that is really so important for us to talk about what we want to do right now is to generate your api keys from bt pass on the sandbox environment so for that reason if you are in here right now logged in you need to click on this that says my account so i'm going to click on my account right here and it's going to open up this page for me and once it opens up this page automatically this this profile is actually selected where you see your profile right here everything about you okay your balance and that of the api your membership type right here okay so we want to change this membership type now if we change it we should also be able to generate a new api key and to do that, all you basically need to do is to click on this key. I mean, at this tab that says the uh, API key. So I'm going to click on that API keys. It, this particular page is actually going to open up for you. And what you need to do is that under this particular page, we will have API authentication type. Yours might be at all or something like uh, basic. Okay. So what you basically need to just make sure you change it to this API keys. So I've already done my own before now, and it has generated an API for me. So once you do that, all you need to do is to go ahead and then click on this submit button that we have in here and if you do that it's going to generate this uh, api key for you okay so you're going to generate this static api key for you 
and alongside there's uh, something like a secret key which my own secret key cannot be shown right now because i've done this before and it happens to be that they normally show this particular key once okay once they show you that once and you need to just basically copy it down so i have my own copy it down to somewhere okay but your old if you are doing it for the first time once you hit submit it's going to generate the two keys for you this public key and also that particular secret key okay which you can um, like basically grab okay so what i'm going to do right now is maybe to actually regenerate a new one i can actually click here so that i can kind of explain it um, to you guys very well okay so if i just click on that you see what happened right here you see that it generates two keys for me okay so this is the first one your own is actually going to basically be like this and you don't need anybody to actually see it okay so i'm going to copy this particular one based on the new one that i just generated for me right now the public key click on there will be a sign here to actually copy but let me just click into this place and then copy everything then if i go back to my environment and i want to go ahead and paste that right here okay so that's just basically the public key and after that this is the uh, what is it called uh, this one is actually the secret key i'm going to copy this and then if i go back to my environment I want to go ahead and paste that right here okay so that's just basically what you need to do and i'm actually going to change my own up in no in no distance time because i don't want you to actually be using my own test uh, keys okay so i'm going to change this up in a little bit okay but just for the purpose of this tutorial i just want to make sure that i leave that right there for you okay so we'll have api key our public key and also that of the secret key right now which is the two things that we we'll basically need right now um you know, you know what i think that before we actually proceed i'm i'm thinking that this particular public key may not basically be what i needed here so i'm thinking about something because the one i did earlier what i used was the api key right here okay i think i should we should just uh, this particular one that says public key is the one that you should use if you are working with something like javascript or front-end language okay html or whatever that's actually when you should copy this public key i think that what i need is just this api key right here so i'm going to copy this quick most most of the time it will not change from the former one so what i had earlier should still be okay for me so if i go back in here i want to replace what i have in here with this particular one okay so i think that's that's just basically what they should do guys and if you have any issues from there you can actually contact a vt pass to actually clear on that but i believe that this api key is what i actually need to grab from that particular place this particular one should actually be just for that of the um if you are using javascript okay so right now we i think we're actually done with uh, this part what we need to do right now is to look for a way to uh, we have that executed right here the next thing we need is to see how is it that we can actually try this out and print something out on the screen but what i'm going to do right now is to just first of all i want to decode whatever that is actually coming back for me from the particular response and to do that i'm going to just basically put that in a result variable so this is going to be result, and i want to go ahead and set that to be equal to um this is going to be i'm going to use a function called a json on underscore decode and i want to pass in this particular variable called response right here so that i can actually use arrows to actually kind of a grab onto all of the things that i'm actually going to be getting so after that let's just dump the result on the screen right now for ourselves so i'm going to just put that in a print out so all we basically want to dump we can go ahead and dump that of the response right here so i'm going to just do variable response and then save this and if we do that right now and then go back to our code right here i want to refresh this page and we don't have any errors yet so i'm going to select mtn then go ahead and enter maybe 100 right now and i want to go ahead and enter the phone number that is actually given to us which is 080111 just like that so i'm going to click on top up and if you take a look at here you see that the status was actually delivered okay so everything works just fine see that so everything works just fine so that's beautiful okay it's actually successful that's just basically how to actually go through the integration so the next thing that i want to do right now is that if everything works just fine for us we want to find a way to actually redirect to the success page because you can actually do this from this point up you can actually do that yourself and to do that i'm going to just basically do that down here what i'm going to do right now is uh, i'm going to just say if and i'm going to make use of that status right there that we have on the we have on the browser so what i'm going to do right now is um I'm, I'm going to basically read right down here right so i'm going to just let me just say header and where i want to read right is going to be on the success page so i'm going to say location and i want to read right to a page called success.php and we can go ahead and then turn it i mean exit that file right here okay but then i want to specify the condition to which i want it to actually read right okay so which all the results i have right now are better than this particular variable called results 
So I'm gonna just basically say if result right now, and we wanna pass through quite a couple of things to be able to see what is in the status right here. So let's go back. You see that we're gonna to have to pass through content, pass through transactions right here. And after that, we can actually get into this status called uh, this particular status that is actually delivered right here. Watch how I am going to actually access that right now. So to access that, well, first of all, I'm gonna pass through content. So I'm gonna just say content. And after we pass through content, the next one we need to pass through is gonna be the transactions. So this is gonna be transactions. And after we pass through the transactions, we can actually go ahead and pass into the next one, which is actually status. So this is gonna be status or status. And we can actually see if this thing that we have here is exactly equal to a string that is actually called a delivered. Okay, delivered. If it's basically actually equal to deliver, this is gonna happen. Okay, it's gonna go ahead and redirect me to the success page. But if it is not, it can maybe go somewhere like, uh, let's say else, something that will do else right here. And I want you to just basically go to, let's just die down the page. And what do we want you to say? We can just say error, um, say something like the transaction failed, something of that nature. Okay, the transaction failed. And that's just basically what I'm gonna do. Okay, so that is just that guys. I think um, you understand what I've just done right here. Okay, so if we go back to our browser right here, and I wanna refresh this page again, and then try this out. So I'm gonna just say MTN. Let's go ahead and do maybe this time around 100. And we can go ahead and enter the phone number, which we are gonna just select the same thing again. I hit this and okay. So I think we'll have an error. Okay, so you don't define the property um, transaction. So that means I did not, I think I did not actually tr uh, spell transactions right right here. So this is going to be C right here. This is how to spell transaction. Make sure it's actually correct. And I'm going to try that again. So maybe let's go back and let's hit top up. And you see that it redirects to that of the, okay. So it redirects to that place. But what we need to do right now is to just build our index page, which is right here. And I don't think I need to teach you how to do this particular one. You can actually build it however you want it to be. What I'm gonna do is just copy and paste the, the, the page, okay, the code for the page. And I'm gonna show you when I do that right now. All right, guys, so I have that copied to the clipboard. I wanna paste that right here, okay? So I have that pasted, and I do not have too much in here. So I just basically have this in here, just say purchase successful, your transaction has been delivered. And this is the style for this page. This is the style, it starts from here and up to that place right here okay this is where the style stops okay so if you want to copy the code for the styling down you can actually do that so you start from here down to right here okay so it's actually very simple what i'm going to do is just save i want to refresh that page right now so and this is how it's actually looking so it looks just like the original one and that is it guys so if you find this video helpful i want you to go ahead and hit the like button and if you are if you are generation up i think it's actually the right time for you to actually share this video with your friends and if you are not actually subscribed to the channel yet i think it might be the right time to ask you to do the subscription right now and it's absolutely free to actually subscribe make sure you are subscribed to the, uh, to the channel and turn on your bell notifications so that anytime i upload new videos of this nature you will be notified by youtube whether it's facebook whatever platform you're actually follow, following us on you'll be notified so that you don't miss out on any amazing uh, video of this nature and then i'll see you in the next one hey guys so there's one more thing that i actually forgot to actually show you guys and that's the transactions that i've actually gone through so we need to go through our vt pass uh, uh sandbox environment and if you take a look at this part right here so just make sure that you are on your wallet balance uh, tab something like that nature you need to be on your wallet balance tab and you can actually see this uh, this menu that is actually decoded on the left left hand side of your page you can actually go and click on something like transactions so if i click on transactions right now i'm going to see that it's going to open up and if you take a look at this place you see that the transactions that we have just done now they came in so if i scroll to the right you see that it's actually completed it's actually completed and if you take a look at the the day the time right now you see that this is 2 uh, 12 50 and take a look at the time just five minutes ago that that actually went through and this one is a 12 um, 49 and so if you compare the time you see that um the things that we have actually done just now they, they worked just fine okay so that's just what i wanted to show you guys thanks for watching and then if you have any questions you can actually put that in the comment section i will respond to them